risk of sounding un-Canadian, there are some of us for whom the ritual of hockey night in Canada is mostly a background drone on television. We may not pay much attention to the game, but we do sit up between periods when a strange man dressed like little Lord Fauntleroy comes on and starts shouting. They call him grapes, as in sour grapes, for all his grousing about rules and nitpickers and whiners. But today, mere sour grapes have stewed and fermented into the grapes of wrath. No one doubts that Don Cherry knows his hockey, but there's a lot more to the man's celebrity. For some, he seems to be reducing the cherished game to a showbiz spectacle like wrestling. And for others, Don Cherry speaks to something way beyond sport. I mean, can I say something about this guy? He's six foot three, 215 pounds, and he comes out and says, there shouldn't be fighting in the game. Well, the guy don't That's fight. the first thing he Don Cherry can't stand. Namby pambies who won't like fight. Him. Well, you can provide muscle without taking penalties or fighting. Oh, yeah, you can provide. Well, the, I'll tell you something. His opinions you reach three to four million people a week between periods on Hockey Night in Canada. But very few. Watch below the belt here, get to jab back. And I don't. <laughs> and then there's the thoughtful cherry. Take women in the NHL. Well, actually, women in the National Hockey League, I think it'd be great. I think every dress room should have one. Cherry on world affairs. I am sick and tired of Canada kowtowing to the rest of the world. I heard a politician say, we have to, wa we have to be careful because the rest of the world loves us. No wonder they love us. We're, we're weak. We're spineless wimps. You don't go through life conducting pure four brawls. Stay with us, sports weekend. But what really that. bugs him? I, I can't stand criticism. One did. Well, you're in the wrong business. I man. know. But I can't stand criticism. You gotta be kidding. You yeah. mean, I think half the things you say are a bunch of crap. And you're telling me you can't stand criticism? I can't stand criticism, but I, what I do is a lot of... Somebody who dishes it out like you? I take it where it comes from, from people like you. It doesn't bother me, left-wingers, see. That's anyone who disagrees with Cherry, and there's the odd one around. But not tonight. He's back in a cubbyhole in Maple Leaf Gardens watching the game on TV and trying out the lines. He works all day on his diatribes, and it needs reassurance from co-anchor Ron McLean. I say, what is this guy? Are you going to bring up him? I don't know. Oh, no, you don't know. You're not... Brian McClellan, six foot three, 215 pounds, doesn't like fighting. Can you imagine that? All I got to say to you, Brian, worry about yourself, get some goals, get some penalties. That sound good? And for Christmas, I hope you got a tennis racket so you could play 15 love. That sounds good, doesn't it? You have to get hepped up for this when you go on. Hey, there's three million people watching. Three well, mil. Well, I have to get a little wired, but I thought for you it came naturally. No, it doesn't. Nothing comes naturally. It's all hard work. <laughs> and attention to detail. When it's high, mm -hmm. shoots down on my head. Cameras are cruel to bald spots, and it's a real problem when the spot covers a lot of the head. If you think anybody's going to notice what's up there when you've got that tie and pin and jacket down there. I don't know. Do you think it's better? Yeah, Don, you look marvelous. You guys think it's better, eh? Do you think it's better? It's definitely better. Yeah. He has to muster a tremendous energy. I mean, I can feel the adrenaline. Even in the desk, I can feel sometimes the vibration. You're a nervous Nelly. I'm not a nervous Nelly. I'm, I'm ready all the time. I'm pumped all the time. That's the way you go. Nobody wants to see guys on TV. Yes, well, that was a very good period, fellows. What do you think? You want to hear some action? Head-busting teeth on the blue line hockey. Don Cherry played just one game in the NHL, but survived 18 years in the minor leagues for three, four thousand dollars a season. His specialty, the sucker punch. Say you're looking that way, and I didn't like what you were doing, and you weren't looking at me. You, I'd get you. Yeah, but you got that little sweet pink Thank baby you. face about you. I can't imagine anybody that being afraid of you. Thank you, but. Uh, well, hey, listen, you, if they don't think you're tough, then you get them by surprise. They're overconfident. It's not how big you are. As Blue used to say, not the size of the dog in the fight, size of the fight in the dog. Remember that, Eric. Blue said a lot of things. She was a rather homely bull terrier Cherry picked up in the dark days. Washed up as a player, he was working construction, breaking concrete with a jackhammer, until he and Blue clicked as coaches. Blue taught the players how to growl and intimidate big guys. 
is it true you took your dog into the dressing room? We do not, Eric, talk about Blue as a dog. We just call her Blue. <laughs> <laughs> and in Boston, for five years, they loved Blue and loved Don's style of rough but winning hockey. Bouchard and Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan ripped a couple of salt. Oh, look at this heavyweight battle. Look at first or second or third or even fourth, you could see it. But he got fired for having a big mouth, he says, and fired again in Colorado for the way he disciplined the owner's favorite player. I grabbed him and I choked him. <laughs> I lifted him right off the bench. And somebody said, do you regret doing that, Don? I said, yeah, the one thing I regret is I didn't choke him harder. Now, folks, let's get ready for Don Cherry's Rock'em Sock'em Hockey. There is a market for the rough stuff. 150,000 of these videos have gone into Christmas stockings, but what kind of an example does it set for the kids, making heroes out of the brawlers? I remember my hero was Gene Autry, and he used to shoot uh, 10 Indians. I didn't go out and get a gun and shoot 10 Indians. That's a, that's a, that's a silly argument. Why because you it? didn't have a gun, for heaven's sake. I you, do have, you do have fists. Yeah, but the I could have all have gun. fists. Yeah. They don't, they don't fight in international hockey. Oh, and... no. I'm glad you brought that up. You walked into my trap. No, Gretzky says he has more stick work on his body in one international game that he does in the whole year of the National Hockey League. So you're saying fighting is what? Some kind of therapeutic value? Supposing you spear me in the groin, right? And I, you can't, uh, I I'd can't, never, I'd never do that. I know that. you do. I'd, I'd never do that. I know, Jerry. <laughs> we're just hypothetical. Anyhow, I can't drop my gloves to straighten you out. The first time the referee's not looking, he'll spear you. So he, you're saying you have to have fighting in the game to keep it clean? Yes. Stick work is the number one thing in this league right now. Well, just outlaw the stick work and the fighting then. Well, easier said Get than back done. Get back to hockey. Easier said than done. <laughs> uh, Michael Talvin in Boston. He's injured now, but... Well, when Michael Talvin plays, and, and he's not breaking guys' hands in that with stick work, he's not Sweets bad, like but Talvin are the very so worst for stick him. work. Five Canadian guys come to rescue him. And Thank don't fight. <laughs> Cherry's dishing it out at the Toronto okay, car show. You, what, are you sweet or what? All right. This is more fun than kicking tires on Volvos. If it makes us a better league, should we not welcome these players? Bobby Orr is the greatest. Swedish hockey players league? are the worst. Don't, they don't check, they don't hit, they don't fight, and they don't score. That's what I like to know. And who else, Don? What do they do? What does this guy do? He brings a Finnish coach, a Finn coach over. What's his name? Alpo Sohonen. What's wrong with that? Never mind. Okay. Takes jobs okay. away from Everybody Canadians. Knows. That's oh, what's wrong. Uh, we wish Rick well uh, in Winnipeg and Alpo well in Moncton uh, because the I don't rest so well. Alpo, it sounds like a dog food. Now, just a minute. Alpo. That's you picking on those Scandinavians right. again. I hope you realize I'm Danish and Swedish. I figured that. Look at that shit with the... Uh, <laughs> I never went out in winter, nor have I ever hit anybody with a piece of wood. Good. Good. I knew you were a Scandinavian. <laughs> I don't like the idea of six million dollars going back to Russia this spring. Six million bucks. That's what how much Cherry figures food? Russians in the NHL will take back home. What's really suffering is the But the five thousand dollars these enough. contractors are paying they for an hour with Don Cherry will stay right in Canada, as it should. Place. And the people that drink the beer, pardon me, the people that drink the beer agree with me. What do you hear from them? Honest to God. What are I'm they thinking trying... about these days? What are they thinking about? They're ticked off. They're ticked off. And I try to tell you this. They're ticked off at the foreigners coming over here earning the dough. This is what I hear it from. Are you a safety valve for people who are stewing about all kinds of stuff? Or I are you dangerous? I don't know whether I'm dangerous. I just say what I think. And I, it's the way I think. You could say it's bigotry if you want. I don't think it is. I'm pro-Canadian, more so than I'm anti-Soviet or anti-Sweet. I wish more Canadians were like me. That really plays in the country these days, but where is it going to end? Where is it going to end if we get into that kind of politics, whether it's in sport, whether it's to do with jobs? We let people come in and take our fish, they, and the people are starving down there. The people come in and, and wreck everything on us. They come in, and, and it wouldn't happen if I was in Parliament. There's You're, not a party in Canada would take you today. I've been asked by two. talking about and what you I've been asked by two. Which ones? Uh, liberal and conservative. And they want Don Cherry yes. in there talking about, the complaining about the immigrants. They want people that people like, that people like on TV. 
How could you not like me on TV if you're a Canadian? Good old boy like me. From the back benches, he'll clean up metric and more. I'll tell you, I'll straighten those guys out. I love, want to be in the back hollering and yelling. I'll, I'll be great. I'll be as great in politics. Can you imagine me? Imagine me going down to Newfoundland. Going down there. What would happen? I'd go down there and I'd say, look, vote me in, and I guarantee you, as I stand here, no foreign trawler would come in and touch one fish. And foreign aid, if you want to get into that, here we got people dying. Here we got people dying for want of beds, and we're giving money to the foreigners. No way. It'd be Canada first, and Canada only. That's what I am, a nationalist. I'm going to start a new power, the nationalist. And isolating ourselves in trade and isolating ourselves no, from the rest of the world will do just as much good as going out and punching somebody in the nose before the end of the 75, third period. 75% of our trade is with good old USA, and they like us strong. They want us strong, not to be wimps. Wimps. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah. But what do you call a guy who spends a good part of every week at the tailors? The shirts are worth $180. He gets them free, though. Advertising. That look lovely. Jeez, I look good. What do you think of that one? Cherry gets it from his father. He was an electrician in Kingston who, in the 30s, no matter how tough things got, dressed just like this, yeah. this like a winner. With the crest, you Don the thinks it's match up. Oh, I like that one. Others crest, wonder. Yeah. Because I'm so aggressive on TV, and because my clothes are always so clean and neat, and the rope shoulders, eh? Like uh, these ropes. are the rope shoulders. Like this are usually for uh, women, and so they wrote in and said I was. Uh, they didn't say fag. They said homosexual, which I thought was nice, anyhow. So, I think you wear those collars to hide your bright scarlet neck. You got it. I'm a redneck all the way. Are you a redneck? because you want to blame your troubles on somebody I else, no like the foreigners. I have no troubles. What troubles do I have? Canadian kids who listen to you say, well, I can't make it in the NHL because of all those damn foreigners. Oh, they say, and they're going to apply that on the you job. Know what, they're going to apply it in school. You know what people say? You start something here, you can't stop. You know what you people say when they see me? Look at this guy. Hasn't got an education, old or a hockey player, no trade, and he made it. He was unemployed in the 70s. Work for two bucks an hour. He said, if that guy can make it, anybody can make it. Don, you're a genius. A genius selection. or not, he sure has made it. Tire commercials, commercials for Pepsi, and now Nike sportswear. What a guy. For those who want more cherry, there's a show in Hamilton. Tonight, introducing his business manager. For 33 years, he's turned every dollar over to his wife, Rose. Now it's bars. Proudly anchoring strip malls across southern Ontario, the Dawn Cherry Grapevines. Cherry franchises his name for $50,000 up front and 6% of the gross. Beer drinkers get a look at the immortal moments, blood on the ice, going after a fan, I'll fix you. That's hockey. Is that that's your, hockey. That's your idea. That's hockey. That looks gorilla. That's hockey. I that, might get sued that by like, that guy. Not now. the guys going out with the, with the, got the Who's big the, helmet on, little eyes peeking out of the thing. And what does such a ferocious guy do for fun? Well, most of all, he likes to wash his car. And he likes to buy China figurines for the house in Mississauga. The kids are growing up now. Cindy runs a dog grooming business, and Timothy works in television. It's all very sedate. And to Dawn's horror, blue number two, baby blue, likes people. Fearsome, she's not. Here's the loves of my life right here. How do you put up, how do you put up with a guy like this for 33 years? You could do a lot better than that. Well, I ask myself that quite often. How do I put up with him? But he's pretty good. He's a pussy. Is he really? I mean, I think I, worse than that, I think he's a sissy. He collects Royal Dalton China and things like that. Well, see, that's the side of Don that you don't know, and only I know, and only Blue knows. Yeah, right. Oh, well, save me. I think I just as soon have the rough and tumble. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really, it's, it's exciting. It's like living with the time bomb. You never know when it's going to go off. But he says that what really bothers him is criticism can't stand criticism. Can that be true? Well, he, the only one that can criticize him is me. And he gets plenty of that from me. Here's a blowhard who can't stand criticism. It's gone from standby to precaution. Precocious, I said. A commentator whose command of basic English is still a little rough around the edges. 
But how do you tell him? Yeah, you ever heard of a preposition? Who's he play for? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you a story about a preposition. I was uh, I went out to Vancouver. I had to honor the Vancouver Canucks at the time, and Roger Nielsen was the coach. So he's over in the corner. I tell the story. He's over in the corner. He's got Swedes, Finns, Czechs, Indians, and everything over there. So I go over and I say, "Oh," and he says, "Hello." So I got to make conversation. I said, "Where's the bathroom at?" And he says, there you are, Cherry. I'm trying to teach my foreign friends, you know, proper English. You come over here. Where's the bathroom at? We do not end uh, uh, our sentences with a preposition around here. I said, okay, Roger, could you tell me where the bathroom's at, you asshole? <laughs> <laughs> we going to put that on? The Fifth Estate will return.